Thank you very much. I have to talk about waste um, fees. Sorting teas is uh, quite an explosive. So if we mix fees with sorting, with, there's a real risk of causing a problem. And that's my issue of the fiscality of waste. Basically, I'm going to spend my whole presentation talking about this, and at the end I will talk about other kinds of fiscal instruments, but not necessarily fees. Here in Spain, the waste fees, like all other local taxes, are regulated by the local treasury laws, and this gives the municipalities quite a lot of leeway in how much they charge. This is the case that we have so many different tax, local taxes as we have municipalities almost. And to regulate that, there's no institutions that can centralize all this municipal bylaw. So it's impossible to know exactly what the situation of these duties are or local taxes. We have conducted studies, one in Catalonia and an unpublished one for the, minister, the finance ministry and based on estimates that we've done in some municipalities, we conclude with data from 2013, an average local tax will be approximately 53 euros per inhabitant per year for collecting the waste, which is why closer and more exhaustive monitoring would be an excellent idea. These local taxes is not something that, that they have to apply. They can charge them, and most do, but it is not compulsory. Another feature of these local taxes, according to the law, is that a municipality cannot generate more than the cost of the services. They cannot make profit out of it. They can be below the break-even point, but not above it. As I was saying, we have almost as many different taxes as we have municipalities. So there's all kinds. In general, the most common one would be a flat rate, where each family pays exactly the same irrespective of any other criterion. But there are other cases that might depend on the number of res inhabitants, the, squ the square area, the amount of water that's consumed. And each of these has its up and down side. But each of them, the starting point is the same intrinsic problem. As a waste generator, whatever you do, this doesn't affect how much you have to pay for it. So there's no incentive there. And there's no financial incentive for using best practices. And the same is true for commercial waste collection taxes. Usually, this has something to do with the kind of commerce we're talking about and the area that it covers. But normally, it has nothing to do with real behavior, I effective generation of waste. Obviously. The fairest approach would be to the amount that you would pay would depend on the kilos or liters of waste that each generator um, creates that, and use that as a tax base. But if we don't, maybe it's because it's not so easy. If it was easy, maybe I wouldn't be here talking about this. If you go to a bakery and you buy um, one baguette, if you could buy two, you pay two. And the same is true of electricity, water, whatever. But with waste, this is not true because we don't have a meter. So we need to create a waste meter if we want to charge in accordance with generation. This is what's called pay as you throw, which still sounds like science fiction here in Spain. But the more modern countries, which we do not form part of, this is very common. There are thousands of experiences out there in Europe and the United States, for instance. I'll explain these pay-as-you-throw systems later. But if we're not talking about that, that, the options for bringing in environmental criteria in these taxes um, are very limited. And it's basically down to tax breaks or rebates for, for for frequent use of clean points or green points, domestic composting, and for shops and businesses. You could be for the implementation of best practices. But the impact of these rebates on people's behavior is very limited. I'm not criticizing the municipalities that use them, but the real impact is minimal. Pay as you throw. 
I've said this, basically this is base, measure the amount of, of gen, uh, waste that's generated. You can measure it by weight or by volume. So we have to create some sort of link we have to measure on the one hand, on the other hand, and create some sort of index between the bill that you pay, i.e. the tax that's charged, and the amount of waste that you generate. Ta local taxes of this kind have a, a, sta a fixed part, but there's also a variable part that will be indexed to how much waste is generated. What kind of fraction are we going to measure, especially the fractions that we want to dissuade or deter I remains, but in general, we would say that packaging as well should be charged for. There are various ways of charging of pay as you throw. Those on the left require the user to be identified, and basically they use they're based on the use of common containers. No municipality would uses only as in Holland and Germany. There are some experiences. Basically, these are contain containers that you need an ID card to access them. And if you have the card, you can dump your rubbish, and then you can link how much you pay to what you dump. But most systems, pay-as-you-throw systems, are based on a door-to-door -door selective collection system. This is something that works. There's some things that work and others that just don't. And this really does work. If somebody wants to sign up to this, they can apply for a pay-as-you-throw. These can be based on volume. And basically what you do, there are two modes for this, or two main modes. You can pay per bag where the, the municipality standardize the, those bags. And these are the only rubbish bags they will they will collect. If it's your rubbish not in those bags, they won't collect them. And you have to buy this, um, these bags. And this is the variable part of the tax. Otherwise, you can do it by bin. And depending on the size of the bin or the number of times you access the bin, this will determine how much local tax you pay for rubbish collection. There are also uh, pay-by-weight systems, but this is here, the bin will be weighed when it's picked up by the dustbin truck. So which model you want to choose will depend on the characteristics, the town planning features, or even the collection system that you've got rolled out in your municipality. Some municipality are doing door-to-door -door sorted collections with bins and chips in order to optimize routes. Obviously, they're not going to do a pay-by-bag system. In other cases, so they might work the other way around. And also, the amount that you charge will depend on how much revenue or the cost you have to cover. It depends on what kind of weight you want to give to the set, the set part of the tax, etc. There are many different criteria. If you're paying by bag, a pay by bag system, which is the most commonly used system, but it does change as technology moves forward and becomes cheaper technology to identify the bins, what we recommend is one bag for commercial waste and one bag for domestic waste. And generally, the rejection and the packaging fractions of the waste would be the one you really charge the most for. And one of the three Catalan municipalities that uses this model is the one that we've studied. These are standard bags. They're translucid, loose, translucent. And depending on the fraction, they might, might be, you can charge a euro, a euro, 175. And this way, you're charging for collecting the rubbish, or the variable part of it, anyway. In the case of bins, in general, they work with a chip or with a tag that's read when they're collected. And depending on the technology you're going to use, you're either going to be measuring the volume or the weight. But they're very similar to the pay-by-bag with, with regard to how much you charge for each fraction of waste. Another thing with a lot of potential is pay as you throw only for commercial waste. Obviously, this is simpler because you have less generators and they're, they're more different. I think this is an interesting route to go. This is easier if, the door to, if you have door-to-door -door selection because then you, there's no leaks from the system. Obviously, there's a, there is a downside too. There's also 
such as illegal tipping in in waste bins or in containers or waste tourism i.e you take it to the next door municipality to dump this is something that's highly visible and we need to face up to it but it doesn't it's not that important for many people and the possible problems there are strategies to reduce these to a minimum here we have a list of the eight municipalities in spain that use systems of this kind of them sorry seven the first one only used it for a year there are others that only do commercial pay as you throw for instance in barcelona as i was saying there's in some countries they it would seem strange not to charge people as they throw or charge a flat rate for, to quote or mention a few holland belgium switzerland and part of the states this is very widespread this is a guide that we wrote in the Catalan Agency of Voice in 2011. It's quite a practical guide for rolling out systems of this kind if somebody wants more detail about them. And my final slide, obviously, I need to mention other incentives. Taxes on tipping and incineration, Francis Giraud talked about this. This is a basic inf uh, instrument for changing waste policy, policy as long as the worst if the worst option is the cheapest, then things are not going to change very quickly. There are over 20 countries in Europe that are rolling out systems like this, so it wouldn't be a bad idea for Spain to do it too. However, this is not enough. It's necessary, but it's not sufficient because the incentive, the incentive should be in a cascade and the incentives that can create this are not enough to create changes in the production system. So what we need to do is to supplement this with um, uh, EPRs, Extended Producer Responsibility Systems, for managing packaging, for instance. I think we have arguments to justify the, 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 this responsibility. What about clothes? What happens with furniture? Nappies, for instance, or uh, health or sanitary textiles there are many areas where extended producer responsibility does not exist then there are other areas where we could uh, apply deterrent taxes aimed at products that cannot be recycled therefore in my opinion should not be allowed into the market at the very least we need to deter them and then I'd just like to mention the penalization and bonification systems I think these are the least known, but they have enormous potential in the association consortiums and the island councils that provide treatment services to the municipalities. We have some examples of this in the, Republican area, Repu the metropolitan area of Barcelona. When you're booking the costs for the services providers, there's no need to treat all municipalities the same. There could be a cost subsidy in the form of a rebate or a penalization to make this neutral for the consortium as a home, but not neutral for each municipality. So those who behave worst are penalized, and those who behave properly get a rebate. And this would create an incentive that would help to change things. And that's it. Thank you very much.